Today I'm logging into a PowerScale version 9.5. So the first thing I'm going to do is create an S3 user. So I'm going to go to Access, Membership and Roles, select a provider, local. I'm going to create a local user. So I'm going to call this user application 01, password, and enable it. That's the minimum that I have to do. Now, the username and password is not what we're going to use when we access the S3 bucket. So this isn't really very important what you make it right here. So we can create the user. What we do use when we log into the S3 bucket is access and secret keys. So we have to go generate them for this user. So we go to object storage, key management, select a user, And here's my user. Okay, so now we're going to, he has no keys created at the moment, so we're going to create a key. And this is the access key, and this is the secret key. So we need to copy these and put them in a safe place. So I'm going to copy this, put it in my file, and I'm going to copy this one, put that in my file, Now the reason we do that is because this secret key, this is the only time we're going to see this secret key. We're never going to see it again. Once we step off this page, this will be hidden. If you lose or forget this key, you're going to have to generate a new key. So next, let's create the folder structure. So to do that, I'm going to use the IFS SMB share. I like to create mine under data, and I like to call it S3 data, and then any buckets that I want to create, I create under S3 data. So I'm going to create my application 01 folder. This is going to be where I put the bucket data. Now you could have other, you could have other buckets here. We could have, uh, you know, bucket one, bucket two, and if I wanted to give users the permissions to create their own buckets, I might want to create something called pub or maybe we'll make it user. So now what I would do is I would give full access to the users who I'm going to allow to create a bucket access, full access to this. That's not something I really want to do because now that user can create as many buckets as they want called anything that they want. Typically applications access buckets and we don't allow users typically to create buckets. As a PowerScale admin, we would create the bucket and give the credentials and S3 path to the application to use. But if you wanted to allow users to create their own buckets, this would be a way to do it. Okay, so now we need to set the zone settings. So um, the bucket root path I'm going to set as, I'm going to put it where I'm creating my application buckets. But this is where if you say, I want to give the users the ability to create their own buckets, this is where it would create the buckets. So if you're actually going to do that, then you would do something like this. Because when we create a bucket, we're going to be able to create it anywhere in the IFS file system that we want. So I'll show you that. Now also, the S3 domain is the Smart Connect zone name. So that's used in the S3 path style addressing. And let's save that. So now let's look at global settings and enable the service, which is only enabling the HTTPS port. I also, because this is a lab, I don't have certificates, so I'm going to enable HTTP and save that. Now we can create a bucket. I want you to think of this much as you think of the SMB share. This is going to be the entry level of the protocol to come in to access the file system. So we're going to create a bucket. I'm going to call it application 01. I'm going to make the owner that we created earlier. And this is where I said we can create this bucket anywhere we want. So even though that bucket root path was shown there, it really has no impact on us creating a bucket right now. So I'm going to the path that I created and I'm going to go here and make it 
this guy right here. Okay, that's where I wanted to make it. Now you could add additional users if you wanted to. Um, I could add an Active Directory user, for instance. I could go here and I could search for myself, create, find myself, give myself full access, and create the bucket. So now I've created the bucket. Now I need to go in and set folder permissions. And I'm going to do that from the IFS share again. So I'm going to go to the bucket. I'm going to say properties, security. Now domain admins was inherited, which is okay. That's how I'm going to administrate this. But I'm going to add that owner. So I change location to the power scale. And I'm going to put that user, say OK. And I'm going to give that user full control and apply. Now I also need to add any additional users that I gave those additional ACLs to at the bucket level. So let me add that user. And I want him to be able to put and get objects as well so I'm going to give him full rights also so these need you know the local user and the additional user these all need to match what we did up at that bucket level and we say okay now some important note is do not disable inheritance inheritance is very important when we have the multi protocol access and even if you don't it's best to leave it on. What happens in an object storage is when you put an object into a bucket, the person who put it there became the owner. And that can create some contention in this scenario. So by enabling inheritance here, and by setting these permissions, we are overriding the POSIX permissions. And a S3 user now puts an object in the bucket it will inherit these permissions and not the ownership of the user who put it there. Again, to remove contention. So this is very important for it to work. Do not disable inheritance. And we say OK and OK. Here's where you can download S3 browser. Now also be aware that this is one of those applications that if you're not the owner, of the bucket, S3 browser isn't gonna show you any buckets when you log in and it won't let you do anything. So what you'll have to do is you'll have to add external bucket. And here's how you do that. Right click, add external bucket. You'll have to know the full bucket name and then the bucket will show up. It'll show up as a purple bucket. That's how you know it's external. If you were the owner of the bucket, it would show up immediately and it would be kind of this yellow bucket. So thank you. And if you could do me a favor, if this was helpful for you, please hit the like button so that other users can see that this video is valuable. Not that I'm getting any monetary gains from that. I just wanted to show other users that people see this useful and it maybe it'll go to the top of the list when you're looking for S3 on PowerScale. Thank you.